I have no standard for how people should treat me. I allow people to treat me however they want. I'm one of these people that just, whatever I get, I feel like I deserve. Um, and it's great. Trust me, it's not, it's like I always, I'm never going to be mean to you. I always try to be nice to everybody. But there are times where it backfires, like I should stand up for myself, but I just can't do it. I was at a hamburger restaurant, and I saw them drop my food on the floor, pick it back up, and then serve it to me. And I ate that food. Because first of all, I'm not a snitch. I get it, you work in fast food, I'm the customer, fuck me. I understand the relationship. <laughs> and when something like that happens to you, you have to be honest with yourself, and you're like, am I above a floor burger? <laughs> Absolutely not, zero percent. I have made a homemade pizza and dropped it toppings down <laughs> on a carpeted floor. Finish that pizza. So you're gonna tell me a wrapped hamburger fall on the ground? Yes, give it to me. I know what to do with it. Frankly, I should pay more for it. it feels kinky, right? <laughs> just slide five bucks and be like, hey, just drop my food on the floor. I like character. And the other thing, I've, I've been in Portland for six years, and uh, I, I, I love it so much, and. One of the things that uh, I realized when I moved here was my, my privilege in this world, right? I'm a straight white dude. Shit has been pretty easy for me, okay? When you're born white in this country, it's like starting a video game with all the cheat codes unlocked. And the only way you can turn them off is to get a face tattoo. It's the only way. So in little things like this, I'm not going to complain. Like, you just take the loss, you know what I mean? Got a lot of karma coming our way, you just got, it's not going to be birthday cake every day. Like, I won't even accept punch cards for free meals from businesses. They will offer them and I go, no thank you, we've taken enough. <laughs> I also don't like inconveniencing people, which I understand is ironic at this juncture. Okay? <laughs> Some people don't agree, thank you. That's actually a compliment. But uh, I was, I work downtown and I ride the bus to work every day and one morning I was a little late, bus passed my stop and I had to be on, at work on time, so I started sprinting for the bus. And the bus driver saw me and he pulled over to let me in. And in the time it took me to get to the front of the bus, I realized that everyone was going to hate me for wasting their time, so I just kept running. <laughs> You know, like an idiot. <laughs> I have an office job. I had a button-down shirt tucked in, tie, backpack. Looked like I was just training for the business casual Olympics. <laughs> or I didn't have enough money to ride the bus, so I was just Usain broke. <laughs> also, when you're running for the bus, you know that everyone on the bus is not rooting for you to make it. <laughs> be honest, right? We've all been on the bus and seen that person, and you're just like, come on, come on, what the fuck are you waiting for? Come on! It's like a little opera you're watching, you see the hope fade as the bus starts to take off. It's kind of sometimes you're on the bus, sometimes you're running for it, you know, you gotta brace it both ways, that's what I think. No one's with me. <laughs> Just trying to dole out life advice and people are like, nah, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I mentioned I moved here six years ago. I moved here from Ohio and uh, just a white dude from the suburbs. So up until now, the closest I had ever felt to the negative effects of gentrification was when my parents turned my childhood bedroom into a sewing room. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I can't go home either. I try to, but everything's remodeled and there's people doing arts and crafts.
It's a sticky subject to bring up in Portland. I understand that. Gentrification. Been here for six years, and I get it. When I see like old buildings knocked down, you do get emotional. It's always the first response I always feel. I feel feel hang like just like not hate necessarily, but just anger. Like you just see something get knocked down, and you think about all the things that happened in that building, the people that passed through it. And you're always like, God damn it, what? what's it going to be, a fucking condo building? Nothing can stay the same, nothing is sacred in the city, it's just going to be another goddamn condo building, and then someone's like, it's actually going to be a weed store, and you're like, well, everything has to change, you know? <laughs> Roll with punches, <laughs> in with the new, out with the old, so forth. <laughs> I like smoking, I like smoking pot, but I'm actually not a big fan of the dispensaries. Because all they did was they took something I love and they just added a line to it. <laughs> they're like, hey, you like weed? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, it's legalized now. I was like, that's great. And they're like, yeah, all you have to do is sit under these halogen lights and fill out some forms. And you're like, nope. <laughs> that's why I started smoking this, to get away from those things. <laughs> but it is interesting to see how they're marketing weed at dispensaries. And so far they've decided on a color chart to tell you about the weed. And the only two colors they use are orange and blue. Not really sure what those mean. You know what I mean? Stoplight, we know what that means. Orange and blue, no idea. I smoke weed and I went up and I was like, okay, this is a blue marker. So am I to guess this is a cold weed? Is, this... is it frosty? Do I need my grandma's blanket when I smoke this? Is that what I need? And this is orange, that's spicy, everyone knows that. So I should probably just pick up some extra toilet paper rolls. Orange and blue, so's dumb. They couldn't use anything else. Use what's on lawnmowers. You know, the turtle or the rabbit. Isn't that, that's a better indication of where we're going. They could use that, or just get rid of stray names. Just name pot for what exactly it's going to do to you. That'd be nice. I want to go into a dispenser and be like, let me get a quarter of a breezing the oven. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll get two pre-roll joints of getting back into Steely Dan. <laughs> Then I'll just finish with, uh, with an eighth of crying at Jamba Juice. I've had that one before. 